Hello, this is Michael O'Grady and welcome to another Flash episode where today we're looking at layer properties. So let's just double click our layer name, defaulting to layer 1, and we're going to make a guide layer. A guide layer or a motion guide layer, as we'll see later, are uh, construction layers that are invisible at runtime. So we're just going down to properties now to look at what we've got in there. Most layers are normal. We can choose a mask and then we can choose a masked layer. Uh, we can choose folders and guides. Uh, we'll do this later but let's have a look at a guide layer. So we get this little T-square. I always think it looks like a hammer. Um, and if we put some content on there we see it in authoring time but when we run the movie press control and enter there's nothing there now I'd, i've got a, a graphic uh, a ball in the right hand side that i'm going to drag on stage and a few times four times and drop these onto this line which i've curved so just drag these on and they snap uh, if you hold by the uh, the center you can just see the the balls snap to this line underneath Okay, so we're using these as a construction device just to get the layout uh, exactly as we we want. Okay, you can also see the IntelliSense or the IntelliGuides popping up when things are the same horizontal or vertical alignment as other objects. So these are still on the guide layer. So what I need to do is take them off the guide layer. Anything on a guide layer is invisible, of course. Make a new layer and drop them on that. So I'll just call this ball layer and then go to paste in place. Remember this paste in center and paste in place. And now when they're under the movie they're there without the line underneath. Okay so we'll move on. I'll make a new layer and just delete these two layers I've created. and we'll change the name of this to tween layer. What I'm going to do is show you the motion guide and I'm going to make this ball tween over let's say 70 frames. Insert a keyframe at frame 70. In that frame drag the ball to where I want and uh, create a classic tween. So it's the dark blue one with the arrow going through and the ball moves from left to right as we'd expect. But I might want the ball to have a less than straight or linear movement so I right click the layer and add a classic motion guide and it gives me this new layer now um, with the, the little dots and the arc and it tabs in the uh, tween layer that I want. So this guide layer now is expecting a line. It's expecting a line that's going to be a path. So with my pencil tool, I'm just going down at the bottom, we can't quite see it, making sure that when I release this, it's a nice smooth curve. Okay, so this is the line that my ball is going to take. So I need to make sure that it's on the end of the path on frame one and at frame 70, just drag it down onto the other frame. And when it snaps, you know that it's locked on. If you move the playhead, you get the action of the ball moving. Okay. So let's make a, another layer and then delete the two we've just created. And this time we're going to have a look at uh, masking. This is a picture that I brought in. It's too large for the stage. Uh, I just brought it in from the web. Um, what you should do is make it the size you want it before you bring it into flash and then you're not bringing in too many pixels or too much data. Uh, so I'm just increasing this in the free transform tool. I'm using alt as a modifier to ensure that I stretch the picture about the bottom left hand corner as opposed to the center. I'll just change this layer name to pick to be masked. This is the picture that we're going to view through an aperture, through a solid shape. The shape is going to disappear but the shape is going to give us the shape of, if you like, a window. So the mask shape or the aperture, that's aperture with one P. <coughs> 
with one P, um, has a, a shape on it, and this becomes our, our window. Okay, so both of these layers are 70 frames long. That uh, doesn't matter. The, the movie will just play straight through and repeat. So on the aperture layer, this upper layer, I draw a shape, and this now, irrespective of its colour, becomes the aperture through which we see the picture. But as you can see, that's not working at the moment, and what we need to do is reassign the mask, uh, the layer properties, to change them to a mask. And only when we've got a mask do we get uh, the ability to make another layer masked. So now we've got a mask, we can make this masked. <coughs> we can either double uh, right click the layer or double click the little white icon. Uh, so I've picked mask and you can now see that uh, our masked layer is subservient. So when we go to run the movie, our picture is just visible through the shape. If we lock them at runtime, we can see also that um, our mask is effective. So if I unlock the mask layer and just start tweaking this, making it a little less round or oval, um, we still get the shape running through. If I go to the paintbrush, make sure I'm on the right layer, the, that's it, go to the paintbrush tool and start putting splodges on. These splodges will allow me to see um, through them, they're extending the, the egg shape. If I do a pencil, that's a stroke, this will not work. So you've got to be careful. Fills work as masks and strokes do not. Okay. So let's just create some artificially, well, some artificial layers. Let's just expand the timeline. When you make your own movies, you'll probably find that you end up with 10 to 15, 20, however many. So it makes a stage disappear. So I'm just going to set this to uh, fit to window. And I'm going to make some folders. When you make a folder, you're able to put layers in. So I'll just call this um, intro for the sake of argument. And press control and click however many layers I want in there. Just select them and then drag them in. And then make uh, make another layer. You can do it through here as well. Expand, delete and insert a folder. And I'll call this other stuff. <laughs> uh, if you click the top one, press shift and click the bottom of your selection, it selects everything in between. And again, you can drag uh, content into there. So you can open and close these at will and it makes the timeline very manageable. We can do a similar sort of thing in the library. I'm just going to right click and duplicate ball. Just make a couple of copies just to give us an idea of content. Your library can be, you know, there can be 40, 50 things in here. Pictures, sound, etc. So we just go down to the folder icon. Change that to ball stuff. And then just drag the ball items into the folder. And then we can turn the folder on and off. Let's just make another one. Let's call this picture assets and drag those in there as well. So now we can turn them on or off as uh, we want. So that's it. We've covered um, roughly uh, the things we need to cover on uh, layers.